Hey there, I'm gonna do another video on the solid lifter conversion that I make for the BMW M50. So just to review, this is what the factory hydraulic lifters look like in cutaway. And uh, this part in the middle of this little cylinder is the actual part that, that hydraulically adjusts the lash. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little cylinder out of the lifters, we're gonna take it apart and take out the components that make it function as a hydraulic lifter. And then we're gonna shim, uh, shim the, the part to set the lash and make it a solid lifter. So this is a M52 lifter with the adjuster already knocked out. Uh, the only thing that actually holds this adjuster in there is there is a little uh, spring clip in this groove right here. So to get that hydraulic adjuster out, the best way that I've found is to take the lifter and tape it to a piece of steel or a board or whatever. And you gotta take this on a hard surface and you gotta give it a good swing and smack it on the table and the inertia will knock the hydraulic adjuster out of there. So once you have this out of the lifter, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out this little spring clip. So I just take, took a pick and I went under the end of it and pry it out of there. And then we'll throw that in the trash later. Now with that little spring clip out of there, we can take these in and out without any resistance and just use a stick magnet. So then we'll take the hydraulic adjuster out. So there's a little piston and then inside of here, there's a spring. So we're gonna throw that spring away as well. And now uh, in the end of this piston, there's a little sheet metal cap in here. And underneath that cap, there's a check ball and a tiny, tiny little spring. So we don't need any of this anymore. So uh, I'm gonna take this little pick and I'm gonna find a little hole in there and you just pry it out and then it will all come out. So there I've got that little sheet metal retainer. I've got that tiny little spring on the end of the pick there and the check ball. And this is what holds the fluid inside the lifter to make it uh, hydraulically adjust the lash. So we're gonna throw all that away. So we're gonna keep the piston, the cylinder, and the lifter body. So to set the lash between these two, I got these custom shims made that are precision acid etched to like a thousandth of an inch tolerance that actually fit inside this cylinder. So the way this works, I have two different sizes of shims here. This one here with the larger hole is 10 thousandths of an inch thick. That's uh, 0.25 millimeters. And this one with the smaller hole is 8 thousandths of an inch, which would be 0.20 millimeters. So by stacking these shims in between these two pieces, we set the, the valve lash. So these shims just fit inside this cylinder and there's a little shoulder machined down on the inside of this cylinder that the piston bottoms out onto. So we just put the piston back in on top of it. Oh, the shims are sitting sideways. There we go. And now with those two shims in there, a 10 thousandths and 18 thousandths shim, the total height of this is now 18 thousandths of an inch longer than it was before. So I've taken all of these lifters apart already and I've put four eight thousandths of an inch, or I'm sorry, three ten thousandths of an inch shims in each one of these. So each one of these is shimmed thirty thousandths of an inch. And now I'm gonna put this lifter tray in the motor and install the cam and the cam caps. And then I will check the lash with a feeler gauge. So I've got the motor 
on the stand here. You could do this in the car just as well. But uh, I've got the motor set here with the crankshaft like 60 degrees after top dead center. So all of the pistons are down from top dead center. So uh, I won't have any issues with uh, valves clashing into the pistons. So I'll go ahead and put the lifter tray into the motor and put the cams in. Then you'll see, uh, to get the lifter trays in the motor, I make these little magnets here. It's just a plastic block with two magnets in it. And it holds the, the lifters into the tray. Okay, so I've got my cam in, got all the caps torqued down, I've got a notebook here, and I've got my angled feeler gauges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a feeler gauge uh, underneath the cam lobe, between the cam lobe and the lifter, and that is the total valve lash. So this first one, five thousandths of an inch, that goes in. I'll go to the next size thicker, six thousandths of an inch. And that one will not go in. So that first one I'm going to call point zero zero five thousandths. There. So then I'll go to the next one. Five thousandths. That feels like it has a lot of clearance. I'm going to jump up to uh, nine thousandths. Nine thousandths goes. Eleven thousandths goes. Thirteen thousandths goes with quite a bit of resistance. Fourteen thousandths barely goes. Fifteen thousandths, I cannot get fifteen thousandths in. So the second one, I'm going to call 14 thousandths. So now uh, I need to go to the next one. So uh, cylinder number two is, looks like the camera's pointed down. So because I have the crankshaft out of the way, I can rotate the cam as much as I want to and nothing can hit. So I'm just going to rotate the cam until number two is pointing up. There, and I'll measure number two. Five thousandths fits with a lot of space. Thirteen thousandths won't go. Nine thousandths, ten thousandths, eleven thousandths. I cannot get eleven thousandths in, so I'm going to call that ten thousandths. It's really hard to write while I'm looking at the camera. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, I'll go down the line and I'll do all 12 on one side of the head. And then uh, once we have all these values, then we'll go back to the bench and we'll adjust. Okay, so we checked all 12 of our lifters. We wrote down the measurements for lash. Uh, the first one was tight at 5 thousandths of an inch, but the rest of them were between 10 and 16 thousandths of an inch. I'll, we'll see when I take it apart, but I suspect I probably put four shims in, in that first lifter instead of three. Uh, so, pulled the cam tray out. Uh, I was also going to mention these magnets, uh, the lifter removal tools that I make, they serve the double purpose that they, the, mag the magnetic force keeps the uh, lash adjuster from falling out of the lifter body when you pull the uh, cam tray out of the cylinder head. So, uh, we just got to go down the line. I guess I'm backwards here, aren't I? Let's start with number one. So I'll pull this one out and 
let's see what we have in here. Yes, I did have, I had a fourth shim in that one. So that's why we got such a low measurement on that one. So if I take that, the extra shim that was in there was a 10 thousandths of an inch shim. So that would mean that our measurement would have been 15 thousandths of an inch. So with just the three 10 thousandths of an inch shims in there. So uh, the last specs for this cam uh, call for 10 thousandths of an inch lash. And since I can adjust in 2 thousandths of an inch, inch increments with this system, I'm gonna go for nine or 10 thousandths of an inch to be my tolerance. Um, I could actually go probably quite a bit outside of that, like anything from like six to 12 to maybe even 14 thousandths would probably be fine with these cams. But since we have the means to adjust it, uh, I will. So what I'm gonna do, I need to make, uh, let's see, I need to make my shim stack uh, five thousandths of an inch, I'll go six thousandths of an inch larger. So I'm at 30 thousandths of an inch now, so I need to be 36 thousandths of an inch. So what I will do is I will take one ten thousandths of an inch shim out and replace it with two eight thousandths of an inch shims. So that should be 36 thousandths. So I'll just take these four shims, stack them up, put them back in the cylinder, put the piston back on top of it, back in the lifter body, and we're done with that one. So we'll get the next one. So this one I have on my sheet 14 thousandths of an inch. So to make it 10 thousandths of an inch, we need to make the shim stack 4 thousandths of an inch thicker. So we have three of the thicker shims. So we have 30 thousandths of an inch, so we need to go to 34 thousandths of an inch. So I'll take two of the thick shims away and I will get three of the thin shims. So the ones with the small holes are eight thousandths of an inch. So three of those is 24 thousandths of an inch plus 10 is 34 thousandths of an inch. Uh, number three is already ten thousandths of an inch, so number four is twelve thousandths. So we need to make thirty-two thousandths of an inch, so that means we'll get rid of all three of the ten thousandths, and we'll do four of the eight thousandths. Make sure I don't have two stacked up. Nope, I, yep, okay, four. Drop those in, there we go. So that's all there is to it. Uh, from here, it's just repeating the same thing. Pretty much it. So, as far as the lash, uh, the cams that I'm running are a set of custom saw lifter cams from Enum, and they specified ten thousandths of an inch of lash on both the intake and exhaust. Um, that's what most like aftermarket solid lifter cams are going to be. Uh, if you're running this on hydraulic cams, like say stock S52 cams or something similar to that, or like the uh, Shrick 270, 276 cams. I would personally recommend lashing the intake to like four to five thousandths of an inch and the exhaust like six, five to six thousandths of an inch. Um, that's what I ran on my car running 
hydraulic lift or hydraulic cams with solid lifters and that seemed to work well. Um, so yep, I guess I'll sign off. <laughs>